Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Unity's script lifecycle. I'm going to begin by walking through a simplified version of the lifecycle. We'll start by talking about the initialization portion of it. This happens at the beginning of every script's life, and it's where you want to assign values to your variables as well as communication between the scripts at the beginning. So from that, we go into physics. And physics is the beginning of the loop of the life cycle. And it's pretty self-explanatory to where you're calculating different physics portions like movements and things like that, as well as triggers and collisions. And then also animation updates in here. And then we go on to inputs. This is just to see how the user is interacting with the game. And then we have game logic, which is where the majority of your code will end up being. After this, we have rendering, so that way we know our user is seeing what we want them to see. And then we go to the end of the frame, and any code that we were wanting to wait until the end of the frame to happen will happen here. And then finally, inside this loop, we'll be checking to see if it's paused. If the application isn't paused, we'll go back up to physics and repeat the loop. And then this will continue until the script's life ends, and then we'll go into the decommissioning phase. So from here, I'm going to delve into certain portions of this loop, and more importantly, specific functions of this loop, and the importance of them and different areas you want to use them in. So we'll begin by talking about the initialization. There's three different functions for initialization, awake, enable, and start. Awake is going to be called first. It's only called once during the lifetime of the script, and it's called before the game starts, but after objects are initialized. This happens so you know that all your values are assigned before the game even begins, and that there's no null errors in terms of objects not being found because they weren't initialized yet when your script tries to find them. Also, if your script is inheriting from mono behavior, it doesn't allow constructors, and so awake is in place of that. And then the awake happens regardless of whether the script is active or not. And then if we go on to on enable, on enable only happens when the script is active, but it can happen many times. So say you have a object toggling between active and inactive, on enable will be called anytime the object is active. So whereas awake only is called once in the script's lifetime, on enable can be called many times. And then we have start, so start is called after awake, but before update. Start is typically used for communication between different scripts. So when you initialize everything in awake, once you get to start, as it's called after all of the awakes on all your scripts have been called, you now know that all your variables have been set, and so you know that you can access different variables of different scripts in your start. Start is called on the frame that the script is enabled, and it's only called once in the lifetime of the script, just like awake. Now I'll dive into the loop itself of the lifecycle. So like I said, the loop consists of physics, inputs, game logic, and renderings in that order. Physics loops itself inside of this lifecycle loop, and it's called at a fixed interval. Physics consists of a fixed update function, which is called at a fixed interval. It also updates your animation, so everything's smooth there for if your physics is being called more often than your game logic. You don't have to worry about blips in your animations. And then there's also triggers and collisions that are calculated there. And then inputs is pretty simple. It's just how your user's interacting, and it's just constantly checking that for you. Game logic consists of an update function, which updates every frame. It checks for yield, so if you're wanting to wait for certain seconds before something happens, this is where this is done, as well as updating your animations just like physics, so there's no mess ups in terms of how it looks. There's also a late update that happens at the end of the game logic section. And then you have your renderings, because you want your user to see what you want them to see. Inside this rendering section, you have your scene rendering, your gizmos, and your UI renderings. Finally, we're going to discuss the different updates that exist. So fixed update is called inside your physics section, and it happens at fixed intervals that you can set inside your settings. So if you want your fixed update to be called every second, it doesn't matter whether the user's running at 60 frames a second or 30 frames a second, the fixed update function will be called every second. So it'll be called the exact same for each person no matter what. So fixed update's typically used for things like character controllers. Whereas when you get to the update function, this is called every frame, so it may be called a different amount of times for different users. So if someone's computer is running at 30 frames a second, update will only be called 30 times. Whereas if a user has 60 frames a second, it will be called 60 times for that user. This is where you typically have basic game logic happening and things like that. And then we have late update. And late update is also called every frame like update, but it happens after update. It's the last update function to be called. This is for things like camera controllers, so if you're wanting your camera to follow your character, then you want to make sure that your character has already been set at its position it's going to be at the, for that frame before you have the camera move. And so late update is used for things like this, that are looking for objects that have been moved during the frame. 
That's been a quick and simplified version of Unity's life cycle. If you want more details on the Unity's life cycle and all of the functions that are inside all the different parts, I'll provide a link down below that takes you to the documentation that Unity provides. But thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. See you next time.